Hello, I'm Kyle. I'm the technical content developer at Maple Systems. Welcome to the Maple Systems video training series. In this video, I will show you how to set up pulse width modulation with a 24 volt DC motor. I will be demonstrating how you ramp up and down using a ramp function in IEC ladder diagram. Please refer to the how to use pulse width modulation tutorial page on the Maple Systems website to get a more simple step-by-step -step setup for PWM and Mapware 7000. For this project, I am using an HMC 4000 series, specifically an HMC 4070 with an HMC3 M1210 Y0201 IO module. Here is an example of a wiring diagram for pulse width modulation using a 24 volt DC motor. You can also find this on the how to use pulse width modulation with a DC motor tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. Now let's get started and keep in mind that I already have everything configured in this project as far as IO module, tags, logic, and base screen, but I will walk you through everything step by step. Okay, so the first thing I did was configure the IO for pulse width modulation. So you would go to the IO allocation folder, expansion, then you'd right click hit edit, and you would add your IO module. And here it's the HMC3 M1210Y0201V2. And then check off download configuration settings, hit configure. And then you can either choose channel one or two. Channel one will be used in this instance. Configuration, normal mode. You can adjust the frequency and on duty register, but you can also leave this as zero and adjust it later on. Hit confirm, and then you will see it configured here, and it says normal mode under PWM channel one. Hit close, and then you'd hit okay. Okay, after you configure your IO, the next thing you want to do is create your tag. So go to the tags folder, and click the show hide filter, hide system tags, scroll down. And here I already have some tags created uh, reset button, acceleration speed, deceleration speed, time change, the time register, uh, duty cycle, duty input, and duty cycle, duty output, real tags. For the reset button, that is a register type bool with no initial value. The acceleration speed I have set to 100, as that is the max duty cycle I have that set to. And the deceleration I also have set to 100 as well. And I'll get more into that later on when we build the logic. Time change I have set to 20,000 milliseconds or 20 seconds. And I'll explain that as well. For the duty cycle input is a real register and duty cycle output is also a real register. After you create the tags, you'll next create the logic blocks. Go to the logic blocks folder. Under main, you would right click, select new logic block, and I've named it ramp up and down. To add logic blocks, you would first insert new rung, and the first piece of logic I have is an input coil, and I'm using a register that is created when you configure your IO and that is the pulse enable flag. You need to put this in your logic to enable pulse width modulation. So that's slot one, channel one, pulse enable flag that goes first in your logic. The next piece of logic I'm using is a ramp function. So over on the right under the advanced folder, select analog ramp, drag that over to rung one after the pulse enable flag. And for the input, I'm using that duty cycle input tag I created. The ascend is acceleration speed, descend is deceleration speed, and time change for time. And the reset bool will go where the reset button is, and for the duty cycle output, the duty output tag we created. 
Now to explain more on this ramp function, let's say you had your duty cycle set to 50 and you had your acceleration set to 100 and deceleration was also at 100 which is the max duty cycle and then time set to 20 seconds or 20,000 milliseconds. It would take 10 seconds to get to 50. So it would ascend gradually from zero to 50 duty cycle in 10 seconds. And as well, when it descends back to zero, it will take 10 seconds to go from 50 to zero. And I will demonstrate that later on. Also, if you were to set the duty cycle to 50, and let's say you change the acceleration to be different than the deceleration, if you had the acceleration set to 100 and the deceleration set to 200, and if you let the time the same at 20, it would still take 10 seconds to get from zero to 50, but it would only take half the time to get back down to zero, it would take five seconds. So if you think of this as the slope equation, so rise over run or acceleration over time. So if you say 100% duty cycle over 20 seconds, that would equal 5% over one second. So it would take one second to go 5% of the duty cycle. If you think of it like that, that's a good way of determining how long it will take to get to each duty cycle and as far as accelerating and decelerating. Something also important to keep in mind is if you change the time or the deceleration or the acceleration, you will have to hit the reset button to see any change you made, it will not work and you will see the same results if you do not hit the reset button. The last piece of logic you'll need to include on this is a conversion and that conversion can be found under the conversions folder and I'm using an any to udint or any to unsigned double integer convert to unsigned 32 bit integer you have to convert this duty output to the actual duty cycle register tag. So slot one, channel one, on, duty, or max frequency setting register. Once you add the three pieces of logic on your rung, this is all you'll need. After you build the logic, you will next create the base screen for the user interface on the HMC device. And to do that, you will go to base screen, right click, click new base screen. And for this one, I've called it PWM DC motor. And as you can see, I've already built everything on the base screen. So I'll run through everything quickly. First, I have a pulse enable toggle bit, as well as the reset button momentary bit and a duty cycle bit lamp, as well as an advanced meter and a register data entry. Now, first the pulse enable toggle bit I have to enable this to initiate pulse width modulation. So for this one, I enabled the feedback tag. So I clicked yes, and for feedback tag name will be the slot one, channel one, pulse, enable flag. Tag name will also be that same tag. For the off text, I have pulse enable off, and it's blue, and when it's on, it'll be pulse enable on. Now for the reset button, this is a momentary bit so when I click this it will reset and I'll be able to change the time and the deceleration and acceleration and I'll be able to see new results when I hit the reset button if I don't hit it it'll be the same results each time and so for this one when it's on it'll say re reset button on it'll be yellow and when it's off it'll be gray and say reset button off for the duty cycle error flag I have this on here if the duty cycle hits 0 or 100 it will turn this on so if it's between 1 and 99 it'll not trigger this so 
keep in mind that one will not turn the motor off. To turn the motor off, you'll need to turn the pulse enable off. And for this bit lamp, I have the on text saying duty cycle error on, and the off text is duty cycle error off, and I'm using the tag name slot one channel one on duty setting error flag. For the register data entry, this is my duty cycle, so I'm using that tag name I created, the duty input, and the minimum value and the maximum value is the minimum maximum reading of the duty cycle. So zero and 100 is the range. Number digits is three. And lastly, for the advanced meter, which is going to show the duty cycle. So when I accelerate gradually, you'll see the meter gradually go up to the duty cycle I've selected as well as decelerate slowly back down. And so for the tag name, I'm using the actual duty cycle register tag, which is slot one, channel one on duty or max frequency setting register. For a value start will be zero and value end will be 100. And I match that with the range as well. Minimum display range is zero and display range maximum is 100. Uh, for meter style, I've selected analog meter. Once you've finished creating the base screen, you are now ready to download and go online. So go up to mode, go online with download. And if you're downloading for the first time, make sure you have firmware checked off. In this case, I've already downloaded once, so I just need to have application checked off. Hit download, download completed, hit close. Now it may take a few seconds for the HMC device to load the application. Once it does, in the compile window, it will say run, and you know you're online and everything is working. Okay, I am now online and looking at the logic as well as VNC viewer, which is the view of the user interface on the HMC device itself. And right here is a camera feed of the actual 24 volt DC motor. Now to turn the motor on, I'm going to enable the pulse. And as you can see, it's set to one duty cycle and I'm going to demonstrate a gradual acceleration up to 50 duty cycle. And I have the acceleration speed at 100 and deceleration speed at 100. And also the time is set to 20 seconds. Now it will take 10 seconds to get up to 50 and it will take 10 seconds to go down back to one or zero. So let's demonstrate that now. five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and let's set this back down to one. I'm not going to set it to zero because it will set off the duty cycle error flag. So I'll set it back down to one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now let's change some of the settings here. Let's change them first and then we'll hit the reset button. So we'll be able to see those changes. Let me change the acceleration speed. Actually, I'll keep that at 100 and I'll change the deceleration speed to 200. And we'll keep that at 20 seconds. Now this should be half the time of the acceleration speed now. Bring up VNC viewer again and hit the reset button. Let's type in 50. Now it should take the same amount of time to go from 1 to 50, about 10 seconds. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 
nine, ten. And it should take five seconds to go back down to one, one, two, three, four, five. And it did. Now to turn off the motor completely, you have to turn off the pulse enable. And as you see, the DC motor is turned off. And I also wanna give you an example of when the duty cycle error flag is turned on. So, so let's enable the pulse. Let's go up to 99. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, which is about twenty seconds. And now we're all the way up at the highest the motor can go. And so let's put this to zero and it should take about 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the duty cycle error turns on. And if we were to set the duty cycle to one, it will turn off. This concludes the video. To get more information, please visit the How to Use Pulse Width Modulation with a DC Motor tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. Thank you for watching.